you can see that firstly one of the most important things to learn is how to be self-reflective can you see that because if, if you're not self-reflective you need somebody else you're dependent upon somebody else to tell you what's going on with your life so one of the very best things we can learn to do is become more and more self-reflective but and to be self-reflective is actually an attribute of humility I don't know if you've noticed, but the majority of people who look in particularly in, in like uh, spiritual circles, and it doesn't matter whether the spiritual circle is a religious type of thing, like a Christian faith or a Muslim faith or some other faith like that, or some kind of spirituality that's involved in new age type of pursuits, most people generally avoid self-reflection. They're not good at seeing themselves they're often quite good at seeing everyone else we we, we, team, we team, seem to have a very good feel generally or many of the times about what everybody else is doing wrong but when it comes to ourselves we are often very limited now that is because generally we have developed this state of arrogance arrogance rather than humility and what we've come to, to do is we've come to believe that our own perception of ourselves is correct. You know, we believe our own Facebook page. <laughs> In other words, we believe our own advertising <laughs> about ourselves, right? And, and oftentimes we, we don't see ourselves as God sees us. And in fact, many of us often have no desire to either, if we're honest with ourselves. We, we want to maintain a certain impression of ourselves that we also give to the world and we have no desire to do it any differently many times now what I feel is one of the main problems most people face in their in their progression towards God is this problem of self-reflection I find there's very little of it and we do one of two things in our arrogance we do one of two things do you, any idea what you might do um, generally if you have no self-reflection like, can I give you some suggestions with it one thing is we look for a leader a leader what does that help us do that means that we don't have to be self-reflective we just go up to him and ask him what his opinion is and he tells us da -da 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 and we go oh, okay okay we believe some of it maybe and then we try to put that into practice right I see a big problem with that it's a big problem with that because in the end that person no matter who he is and he could be the most developed person in the universe that person still is going to have their own opinion and he's allowed to have by the way from God's perspective his own opinion and by you wanting his input all you're doing is making yourself reliant upon him or her that's all you're doing you're creating dependency does that make sense and why do we do that we do that because we don't want to go through the personal experience of making mistakes which is actually a condition of arrogance that causes us to do that we don't want other people to see see you made a mistake there's another mistake oh, there's another mistake and point the finger at us and because we avoid those particular emotions we want to go to somebody he tells us what to do we go and dutifully do that and then when somebody points out we've made a mistake no I didn't that person told me to do all that we, we want somebody to be responsible for our choices and decisions that's why we look for leaders you know looking for leaders creates cults which then creates religions which also creates politics which also creates economic conditions and so forth and so forth and we can you could list almost everything that nowadays many of us feel the negative in the world we have around us and it all comes because we are unwilling to go through our own personal mistakes and we want somebody else to rescue us from the potential of making any mistake all right that's one of the things we do we look for 
a leader. The other thing we have a tendency to do is say to ourselves that everything is okay. <laughs> Look at myself in the mirror. Yeah, he's beautiful. Don't worry about him. Everything's okay. <laughs> right? And the reason why we do this is because it helps us avoid the feelings that we really have. So we love to do that. Now, what happens when we tell ourselves everything is okay? What's the next thing that happens after we tell ourselves everything's okay? We start saying that everything's okay with the world. Or we say that all of our problems are the world. <laughs> Not okay world. One or the other. We then create spiritual belief systems that tell us one of these two things in avoidance of the fact that we're not okay. And again, we could trace a lot of the creations right the way through to our economic system, our religious systems and so forth. Now, these are all because we want to avoid self-reflection. All of these things are happening. We want to avoid what's going on within ourselves. We want to avoid seeing ourselves as we truly are. Right? It's much better to not search for a leader. Selama, so it's much better that you don't ask me what's wrong with you. <laughs> Does that make sense? What's better is to become more humble and be self-reflective. This is what I've had to do in my life. I have not relied on other people to tell me what's wrong with me. In fact, many people would still come up and tell me what's wrong with me and I know they're wrong. <laughs> and then some people come up and tell me what's right with me and I go, no, that's actually wrong with me. <laughs> that's something wrong with me. <laughs> still, you know. So, so we need to be self-reflective and allow ourselves to see our, ourselves as God sees us. That's what we need to do. In other words, what I need to do is know what God feels about me and what God sees in me. And a lot of people then assume that God only sees good things in you. If you think that, you, think, you obviously think God's pretty dumb because God sees everything, <laughs> like not just good things in you. Right? The reality is God sees us exactly as we are, our original self, our injuries, our injuries and our facade, everything. Right? And God's laws are all trying to expose to us at every single moment what we are. So you've heard of the law of attraction, yes? You know, and I'm not talking about some new age concept of this law. I'm talking about this law that God created that is actually demonstrating to us at every single moment of our existence. Even when you're asleep, you're in the spirit world having experiences. You're having your sleep state experiences. And even there, this law is still in our operation, trying to show you what you are right now. And that what you are is not just your real self, but it's also with your injuries and your facade. And God's law is trying to show you what you are. And there's another law called the law of cause and effect. And that's trying to show you what you create. Right? It's trying to show you what you create. It's trying to show you the relationship between what you've created and why you created it. Then there's another law called the law of compensation. And that law is giving you pain to show you a feedback system to show you that you've done things that are out of harmony with love. That's what that law's for. So every time you feel any pain at all, physical, emotional, spiritual, whatever pain is, the pain is an indication that there is some compensatory thing going on for a previous choice or decision that has been made. And the key for you is to want to know what it is. Right? Now I could list more laws, and every one of them are laws of love that God is trying to, God is, has created so that you, personally, without assistance from anyone else, can actually see everything about yourself. And all I'm trying to share with you is how to do that. 
Does that make sense? So I don't want to share, I don't want you to do what I tell you to do. What I want you to do is to know how you can engage this process with God so that you can sort everything out for yourself. In other words, you become self, like what I would call self responsible individuals. That's what God wants you to become a complete self responsible individual. So this is very, very important. So in answer to Lamar's question, basically what I feel needs to occur is rather than asking, and, and you're allowed to ask anything in these seminars, by the way, including about yourself, but rather than asking questions about what is my single biggest injury, my feeling is, what do you think your single biggest injury is? Number one. Number two, are you doing something about that every single day to fix it or are you just putting it on the back burner all the time you know putting it aside putting it aside putting it aside not dealing with it huh? what are you doing do you are you do you have a will to even address the issue and if you have no will to address the issue what are you doing to fix that do you see these are the kinds of questions that I ask myself every single day and to me, these are the kind of questions that need to be asked of every, by every single person every single day.